But your comments on the OPCW, the announcement today that they are receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. Good morning. Good morning, Amy. I'm really delighted to see that the OPCW has won the Nobel Peace Prize. It's a, it's a wonderful occasion, a wonderful award for them. It's well-deserved. Uh, they've been working uh, day and night, literally, for the last 16, 17, 18 years to free the world from a whole class of weapons of mass destruction, chemical weapons. So it's, it's very well-deserved and, and really a pleasure to uh, talk about them. Talk about what they do. You know, the OPCW was established uh, under the Chemical Weapons Convention, which was open for signature in 1993. It's the implementing agency. Uh, it's got about 500 people working uh, from all over the world. Uh, it's a multilateral agency. Now, with Syria's accession to the treaty, it has 190 state parties, or 190 countries who are members. And they inspect uh, declared chemical weapons stockpiles, such as the big ones in Russia and the United States. Uh, they inspect 24-7, round the clock, the destruction of those weapons, which is required under the treaty. And they also inspect chemical industry, because we have over 5,000 chemical plants all over the world uh, which can produce dual-use chemicals. So uh, they're really uh, the watchdog, the international multilateral watchdog to eliminate a whole class of chemical weapons and make sure that they never reemerge or reappear somewhere in the world. Professor Stephen Zunis, um, can you talk about its history? Well, the OPCW has overseen the destruction of close to 80 percent of the uh, uh, world's uh, chemical arsenals. Uh, it's uh, been uh, quite effective, given the uh, technical complexity of it. But they've had to do so amidst uh, occasional hostility, uh, for, particularly from the uh, United States. Uh, for example, Jerzy, Jerzy Bostani, uh, who was the um, director general uh, uh, beginning in 1997, uh, oversaw the, the greatest expansion of the uh, of the treaty, uh, the the largest amount of destruction of chem of weapons were under his leadership, and yet, in part because he was so effective, he was forced out by the uh, Bush administration because he insisted that the uh, United States uh, chemical uh, weapons stockpile should be inspected just like everybody else's, and because he was very close to making a deal with Saddam Hussein to let, uh, allow Iraq to become a signatory, so inspectors could come in and and prove that in fact Iraq had eliminated their arsenal, contrary to the claims of, uh, the, of, of Washington. And so, uh, in, in many respects, I think the awarding of the Nobel Peace Prize to the OPCW uh, is, is a means of saying, you know, hey, look, great powers have tried to um, um, uh, uh, dismiss and to um, uh, discredit the OPCW, but multilateral actions based on treaties are far better means of controlling the spread of these deadly weapons than unilateral military action. Uh, Paul Walker, can you talk about what happened, that kind of pressure that was brought to bear on the first head of the OPCW right before the Iraq war that could have averted the U.S. attack on Iraq? Well, the—one the, uh, of the major catchwords for the OPCW and all multilateral organizations is universality. In other words, you want every country in the world to join these regimes. And we've all been working very hard for the last 15, 20 years on trying to universalize the Chemical Weapons Convention. Jose Bustani, Ambassador Bustani from Brazil, was the first uh, director general, what we call the DG, the director general of the OPCW. And he was outreaching to a wide range of countries to join the treaty. I think in, by the year 2000, three years after entry into force, uh, we had maybe 125 members, 130 members of the treaty. <clears throat> There's 196 countries in the world, so we had a large number still outstanding. And uh, one of his areas of outreach was to Iraq. Uh, we knew Iraq had had, had, had chemical weapons. Uh, had used them, actually, in the 1980s in the Iran-Iraq War, and, in fact, had, you know, brutally murdered Kurds in Halabja in 1988. So his outreach in the early 2000s, 2001, 2002, uh, was, I think, on the, in the views of many of us, very, very appropriate. The United States and the Bush administration took umbrage at that, however, and eventually made a public campaign to oust uh, Jose Bustani, and he was actually ousted, uh, fired, essentially, by the OPCW, the Executive Council, in 2002. Uh, subsequently, he went to the International uh, Labor Court, International Labor Organization, and sued the OPCW and won the suit, actually, in violation, uh, that he was fired in violation of his contract. He subsequently became a Brazilian ambassador to uh, Britain, went to London. 
and uh, and a second director general came on board, uh, Rogelio Fiata, from also from Latin America, but from Argentina. And Rogelio Fiata actually turned out to be uh, very, very good. Uh, and now the the current director general, uh, who's a Turkish ambassador, uh, Ahmet Uzumcu, is likewise very good. But the whole, whole Jose Bustani affair, to me, was quite embarrassing that the United States would make such a public display of its uh, effort to control the OPSW and preclude Iraq from joining the treaty uh, before, of course, shock and awe, which happened in March of 2003. So it was, it was a very sad time and, I think, frustrating for everybody. But the United States has moved on from that, and so has the OPSW now. Who has and has not signed on to the Chemical Weapons Treaty, and um, what, what does that mean? Well, we have, we have uh, still five countries remaining outside the treaty. Uh, it's, a, it's a strange mix. Uh, it's now that Syria has joined, you have Israel, uh, which has not ratified the treaty yet. You have uh, Egypt, which is neither signed nor ratified. You have Angola, which is neither signed nor ratified, but is thinking about joining. Uh, I think it will in the near future. You have Myanmar, uh, Burma, which is signed but not ratified. And then you have the you have a uh, African country, South Sudan, brand new, very difficult to get it to join any regime. And then I guess it, it's actually six. You have um, North Korea, which of course is the high hanging fruit, the most difficult country of all. But other than those six countries, um, 190 countries have joined, and uh, you know a number of those have declared chemical weapons stockpiles. The United States, Russia, the two big ones that hold. 95 percent of the declared chemical weapons stockpiles. And then the smaller possessors were India, uh, South Korea, uh, Albania, uh, Libya, uh, Iraq, with the leftover chemical agents and materials that we still don't have a full handle on from the 91 Gulf War. And um, Though they and did sign on Libya. later. They did sign on. Ironically, Iraq, Iraq came on board in 2009. And they've been a very positive addition to the treaty. And they've declared two large bunkers of old chemical agents from the Saddam Hussein pre-91 Gulf War era that was sealed up in the mid-1990s by the uh, United Nations inspectors. But there were never any additional chemical weapons, as the Bush administration claimed in 2003 when they attacked Iraq.